I'll do this one a service. So we'll just call it service item item one. And I'm just going to make up this would be the easier kind of transaction with a service item as opposed to an inventory item. We'll do both of them here. Let's start off with a service item. And we're just going to say it's going to be dude price 150. Let's just say it's just going to services income. I'm going to say that it's not sales tax because it's a service item, possibly not subject to the sales tax to make the first one simple. And then we're going to say save it and close it. And so there we have it 150. So there's our basic sales receipt with no sales taxes would be the easiest one that we can see. We can add lines. If I had multiple lines similar to an invoice, we can clear the lines. We can have a message uh, to display to the sales receipt. If we were to provide it to a client, that might be something you wanna add. Message displayed to uh, on statement, you have the attachments, you can cancel, you can clear, you can print or preview. Let's check that out. We're gonna print or preview it here. So we'll print and preview it. Doot, doot. And so there it is. So you can check that out. We're going to close it back out and then you can make it reoccurring. If it's a reoccurring transaction, you can customize it. If this is a form that you're providing externally, it might be worth customizing. You can copy it in the more section void delete transaction journal history. We have the save and we have the save and send. And what is this going to do? Well, it's a sale. If I do the just a normal journal entry over here, just to say sales receipt, what's it going to do? It's going to go right into the checking account because that's what we made it do this time instead of an undeposited fund. And the other side is going to go to some kind of income. And we said it was for $150. So there's the journal entry. You can check it out. Cash is going to be going up and income is also going to be going up so net income is increasing down here so let's record it and check it we can save and close it we can go into our balance sheet run it and we're going to say okay let's go into the checking account checking out the checking close this out and hold on, I'm gonna go back and change the dates. I need to change the dates. Running the dates, let's go from 010124 tab, 123124 tab, run it to refresh it. Going into the checking account once again. And so there it is, there's the 150. If I go into that 150, that will take me to the sales receipt. Closing that back out, back to my reports. On the income statement, range change, date range that is, 010124 tab, 123124 tab, run it to refresh it, there's the 150. Now note with the sales receipt, we don't have as much detail, we don't have this accounts receivable we have to track. So we don't have that sub ledger that I have to deal with, which is nice. If I go to the internal documents, it's less likely that we're as needed to track the information over here, but we might have some issues, right? So if we go into the sales and I wanted to track the sales receipt, I could go into all sales transactions. I'm gonna close the hamburger for now. And I could look at, uh, I could look at the sales receipts, closing this back out and there's the sales receipt that we had. We can check it out, but we don't have to collect on it. So it's not as vital as the invoices. It doesn't have its own tab over here because the invoice is, if a customer had a question about a, about a transaction, we can go in here and we can go into that particular customer and check it out as well. Now note, if you're at a food truck though, or what any kind of one-time one-off sale type things, you might not have repeat customers and you might not have all of their information because you're just creating a receipt. So you might have everything under there as one customer and create, you know, as you're creating basically receipts or something like that, in which case you wouldn't have all the details for each particular customer. It would depend on the industry as to how, how much detail you would have by customer. So, so if I go back on over, now let's imagine that we do it again, but this time it's gonna go into undeposited funds because, and we'll make a couple of them going into undeposited funds. I'll also make it a little bit more, oh, that's an invoice, hold on. Let's do it again with the sales receipt. 
I'll also make it a little bit more detailed in that we'll make it an inventory item, noting that the sales receipt is basically the similar form as an invoice. The, these are the two sales documents, sales receipt, invoice, invoice increase in accounts receivable, sales receipt, instead we get paid at that point of time, increasing therefore either the checking account or some clearing account like undeposited uh, funds. So, so the look and feel of it will be very similar in terms of the sales side of the transactions down below. So we'll sell an inventory item. So this is gonna be customer number two. And I'm just gonna set that up and tab in through it. If we wanted to email it, we'd have an email address. I'm gonna make this on the 16th, 17th, let's say. And let's say this was cash this time. So let's imagine we're selling these things for cash. Well, if I sell it for cash, I don't wanna put it directly into the checking account because it's gonna be in my check register, not in the checking account. And because when I put it into the checking account, it's gonna be grouped as one lump sum with multiple cash sales, right? So I have to put it into undeposited funds. Similar thing with a credit card payment. Okay, so let's make a new product down here. I'm just gonna call it item one. So we're selling item number one. I'm gonna add that. And this time I'm gonna make it an inventory item. We'll talk about adding inventories more in detail when we get to the, to add to the part of the course where we do a new company file, but let's just take a look at it now. We've got an item, no SKU. We're not gonna add an image, not a category. Quantity on hand, I am gonna add a quantity. I'm gonna say there's 10 of them on hand already. This will create a journal entry in practice, normally we wouldn't do that because normally we would want to buy them and with a bill or a check form. But here we want to focus on the sales form, so I want to put them on hand here. Let's put it as of the beginning of the month of December and reorder point. I'm not going to add one. Inventory, that's going to be the account impacted increasing when we purchase inventory, decreasing when we sell the inventory. We are selling the inventory at this point sales 